Now let's talk about a problem from chapter 10 that we could work that kind of summarizes everything that uh, we talked about. I mean, chapter 10 was kind of a little bit different because it covered so many different um, aspects of fluid mechanics. So I thought I'd pick a problem that was kind of uh, combined a bunch of different things together. Uh, in this problem we have um, a block that's being pushed up a hill. Okay, This block we have uh, has a weight of 150 newtons. What we want to determine is we really want to know what this force is here, F. And we also want to know, well, basically what the force is, F. For the first case, the block is just rubbing against this hill and the coefficient of friction is uh, 0 0.27. Um, the second part of this problem asks us to replace just the raw interaction between the block and the hill if we put a little bit of oil underneath. How much would that force then be for those two cases? All right, so let's go ahead and solve this problem. First thing I want to do here is I want to draw a free body diagram of this block just so we make sure that we get all of the forces that we need to down and understand what we're dealing with. All right, so we have a block here. The forces acting on this block are frictional force. Okay. We have a weight acting in the centroid. So it's weight. Uh, and we also have a normal force. We'll say that normal force is acting like this. Okay, let me draw some lines here just for reference. So this is theta, and then uh, this one also should be theta. Okay, um, well, of course we have our force that we are exerting on the corner of this block here to push it up. And I should also mention this block is moving at a velocity, some constant velocity, which means it's not accelerating. Okay, so velocity is constant. Okay, I think that's about all we need here. And we'll put some numbers to this once we've set up our problem. So let's go ahead and analyze our forces. Oh, and I need to label this. This is the normal force. Okay, so let's label these. So using our vector notation, since force is a vector, we can sum all of the forces up in the x direction. And since the acceleration mm -hmm. is zero, we can say that the sum of the forces in the x direction is zero, no acceleration. Velocity is constant, so if we take the derivative of that, it's zero. So sum of the forces is zero. So obviously, I guess I need to also define my coordinate system. I'm going to say straight up vertical and straight horizontal. This is x and this is y. So some of the forces in the x direction, obviously we have our force F. Okay. What else do we have? Well, we have a component of the normal force acting to the left. So we would have minus normal force oops, sine theta, and the frictional force also acting to the left, so we'd have minus friction force uh, cosine theta, and that's equal to zero. I think that's all the forces acting in the x direction. Yes, okay. Let's also look at summing the forces in the y direction. And of course, it's not accelerating in the y direction either. Let's add all those together. So obviously, straight up and down is the easiest. I'm going to just write down the weight of this block. Next, we have the components of friction and normal force acting in the y direction. So friction force is act also acting downward, minus friction force. Uh, sine theta. Uh, 
Then we also have uh, the normal force component, which is acting upwards. So that's plus uh, normal force uh, cosine theta. And all of this is equal to zero. All right, so we basically have the unknowns that we have right now are F, that's what we need to find. We also don't know what the normal force is right now. We don't know what the frictional force is right now. We do know what the weight is. So we only have two equations, but we have three unknowns. We need one more equation to solve this. So I'm going to use by definition, so let me just write here, by definition, frictional force is the coefficient of friction F times Fn. So what we could do is we can plug this value into here, okay, to get an expression or solve for the normal force. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's see, the weight of this is given as 100 and minus so minus 150 newtons minus frictional force is friction coefficient of friction times normal force. And I'm going to say that the coefficient of friction is, um, let's say it's 0 0.27. Okay, that's what we'll say this uh, coefficient of friction is. Okay, um, this is sine of, and the angle that's given in the text is 20 degrees. And this is plus normal force, again, cosine of 20 degrees. That's all equal to zero. So we only have one unknown here, which we can solve for. That's the normal force. Solving for the normal force here, um, let's see we would get 177 newtons. Okay. So that's one part of our problem. Uh, the next is determining what F is. So we would use our first equation, which is right here, to find out what F is. So F is going to be equal to uh, Fn sine theta, so 177, 177 sine theta plus 0 0.27 times 177 cosine theta or cosine of 20. So we can solve this one and find out that the force that we need to push this block up the hill with ends up being 105.4 newtons. So with nothing in between our block and the ground, our amount of force that we need to apply to this is um, given there as 105.4 newtons. All right, so what we can do now is determine what happens when we put, um, instead of a frictional force, we put some oil. So now we have instead of a, so inst with oil, instead of friction, we have a shear force, F shear. Okay, 
so the shear force is going to be equal to obviously our shear stress times our area and remember this is given in our review okay and this is also in the text of your book where uh, we talk about um, shear stress okay so if we expand what this shear stress is we can show and again this is a relationship in your book for a similar type of problem that's given I'm not going to derive this but we can show that the shear stress is the viscosity times the velocity gradient and since this is linear this is how it looks now we're going to say that the viscosity of the oil is 0.012 Pascal seconds the surface area of this block it has a depth of 20 uh, centimeters so we're going to say it's going to be 0.5 times the depth of this so the surface that's in contact with the oil times the velocity which is 0.8 divided by the height of the oil and we'll say that the height of the oil is uh, 0 0.4 millimeters or 0, 0, 0, uh, 4 meters okay so solving for this shear force here we would have 2.4 newtons so just right away you can contrast that with the other value uh, for that we calculated for our frictional force so replacing now this into our equations that we previously drew so I can I can write them again here so I can say that the sum of the forces in the x direction is 0 and we can put uh, our force minus our instead of frictional force now our shear cosine theta minus our normal force and now our normal force has changed right so this is I'm gonna put normal force 2 because it's not gonna be the same as it was before this is all equal to 0 and if we sum all of the forces in the y direction so I can also put this as force 2, okay, so that we don't get confused. Force, I'm sorry. Um, for our y direction, we would have the uh, force normal 2 uh, cosine theta minus the shear force sine theta, and then we would have our weight w. So we just replaced friction force with shear force now and we have a value for our shear force so solving these again we would have the normal force 2 is equal to 160.5 newtons and our force 2 here would be 57.2 newtons so the question is would we have to exert less force if we had oil instead of just having it in the ground it makes sense it's gonna be quite a bit less right I mean let's see how much so percent reduction let's calculate what the percent reduction is the percent reduction is gonna be F1 minus F2 divided by F1 times 100 so we have initially we had 105.5 minus F2 which is 57.2 divided by our initial value 105.5 and that's all comes out to be 45.8 so we reduced the amount of force that we had to exert by 45.8 percent okay so that's just the general problem from chapter 10 that you guys could get some hands on probably I think it's probably the hardest problem in chapter 10 probably and I thought I would just do it for you guys so you had some reference here of what what we were talking about in terms of shear stresses and 
and get some reference. So the next chapter we'll do is we'll talk about um, fluid statics.